This is the popular Sony A6000 that's a few years old now, and I imagine others will start to face broken shutters or other issues, and may venture into trying to save money and do-it-yourself fixes before picking up an A7 Mark II for $2,000. In this video, I quickly highlight some of the main views of unscrewing screws for disassembly, as well as tell you about the one other flaw of this camera I discovered while troubleshooting a power issue. Now, you flip over the, uh, the flash assembly to expose two screws there, and at the bottom, there's uh, two or three screws at the battery uh, compartment. There's screws on the side, but you could pry open the, the casing first, as well as uh, pop the top open. There's a screw for the EVF and two more screws holding it to the body of the camera. There's also a screw for the diopter. And when you quick uh, when you remove the casing, this is how it looks. You'll find other screws around the EVF and also the menu dial mechanism. And don't forget the bottom screws. There's three more screws on the right side and the left. And you could also at this point remove the menu dial and take the LCD off with the ribbon cable. Um, you should be careful there. And the two screws holding the battery compartment, as well as this protective sheet that um, exposes the main board. You could remove the screws, but also remember to uh, get the microphone wires out of the way. And there you have it. The sensor and the shutter mechanism is available for you to troubleshoot, but be careful to not touch the capacitor as it will probably zap you. Now this camera was not able to turn on and turns out I had to get this top flex um, cable part that had the on off switch mechanism. And if you could see in the picture, it's a very small lever and there's a spring inside. This is the top view of the switch mechanism. And as you can see, that whole piece had broken off. This is a better view of the flex top part. I don't know the part number, but it's about $40. And a different angle view. And you can really zoom in. And these are very uh, tight parts and I'd recommend you hold on to the old piece as reference to see where the cables flex and bend. And overall, um, there's actually a soldering part as well. That is another sensor that needs to be soldered on. I don't know what the component actually does, but it did involve soldering. And overall, you know, everyone loves this camera, but I cannot understand how such a fantastic camera has such a weak power on-off switch mechanism. And I hope this is not the case in the newer cameras. 